At the base of Utah's Wasatch Mountains, a monumental force underpins our national defense. For 80 years, the 9,000 men and women of the Ogden Air Logistics Complex have been the backbone of American air power. Constructed in 1940 and originally called the Ogden Air Depot, the ALC maintains a legacy of sustaining American aircraft and intercontinental ballistic missiles. Headquartered on Hill Air Force Base, the ALC employs 42% of the installation's workforce across 272 of its facilities, while also conducting operations in 10 remote locations across the United States and Japan. The complex provides maintenance, overhaul, repair, and inspection to America's premier fifth-generation fighters, the F-22 Raptor and the F-35 Lightning II, as well as legacy weapon systems like the F-16 Falcon, A-10 Thunderbolt, and T-38 Trainer. The ALC also develops, tests, and fields software modernization packages for space-based systems like GPS and for air-breathing fighters, enabling robust and affordable integration between fourth-generation fighters and their fifth-generation counterparts. The ALC's Commodities Maintenance and Electronics Maintenance Groups repair and overhaul exchangeable assets for nearly every aircraft in the Department of Defense and for partner nations as well. They repair everything from actuators, heads-up displays, radar systems, secondary power engines, aircraft generators, to flight control surfaces, wings and canopies, and aerospace ground equipment. Additionally, these groups are home to the Air Force's only indoor firing range for the A-10's 30mm cannon and its only facility for full wheel and landing gear overhaul. As the Air Force's center of excellence for landing gear, the ALC produces over 500 assemblies for the DoD supply chain each year. From the C-17 on humanitarian assignment in South America, to the A-10 providing close air support in Afghanistan, to the T-38 providing training missions stateside, the Air Force flies over 1,000 sorties each day around the globe, and almost all of them land on our landing gear. Key to America's warfighting capability is storage and regeneration of its massive fleet. Located on Davids Monthan Air Force Base in Arizona, the ALC's Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group stores more than 4,400 military aircraft and regenerated 121 to service in 2019 alone. Their reclamation operations enable the return of critical parts into the supply chain, sometimes long after they were discontinued by the manufacturer and at a great savings to the taxpayer. While the Air Force fighter aircraft display the ALC's capabilities in full view, sometimes the greatest impacts are just below the surface. Beneath the plains of Montana, Wyoming, and North Dakota lies the most powerful military force known to man. Hundreds of Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, or ICBMs, provide the United States of America the nuclear deterrence required to maintain peace around the globe. Ogden ALC sustains the missile's ground and flight systems, manages over 9,000 end items, and delivers roughly $30 million in parts to the missile fields annually, directly ensuring our nuclear forces continue to deter global conflict. These critical mission areas only scratch the surface of what we are accomplishing today, and we are not standing still. The complex has facility modernization, workforce development, and technology insertion efforts underway to ensure we remain postured to meet the readiness requirements of tomorrow. From 1940 to today and beyond, the production efforts of the men and women of Ogden ALC will underpin the unmatched capabilities of our nation's nuclear and conventional air and space forces. Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm Captain Ryan Deming. Thank you for joining me today on this virtual tour of the Ogden Air Logistics Complex and specifically here at the 573rd Aircraft Maintenance Squadron here at Hill Air Force Base. Today we're going to be talking about the center display unit upgrade uh, for the F-16 aircraft behind me. Once this aircraft arrives at depot, we have to begin by tearing down various parts of the aircraft. Specifically, we're going to be removing co components from the forward equipment bay right behind the ray dome 
and components from the aft equipment bay directly under the cockpit, and then components from the cockpit itself. Once all of these components are removed, we can begin the routing process and the modification of the electrical infrastructure required for the CDU upgrade. Now, this really consists of removing roughly 100 wires and then reinstalling about 700 wires. Once all of those wires are installed and routed, then we have to terminate those wires, meaning those wires are gonna be connected to the various pins and components within the aircraft to make the center display unit work. After we've made all of those connections, the next step is to make sure every single wire has continuity and every single wire is working. So each of those 800 wires, roughly, that we've installed have to be tested. After that portion, which is called ring out, we'll go ahead and install the avionics components specific to CDU. After the install of those components, then we begin aircraft buildup, re replacing all of those components that we took out of the forward equipment bay, the aft equipment bay, and the cockpit, and we build up the aircraft to be a full aircraft again. Once the aircraft is built up, we're not done yet. We still have to go through and test every single system that is affected by pulling those components out. This is our ops phase. These things consist of things like making sure the emergency lighting works, making sure that AC-DC power on the aircraft works, and making sure the fuel systems work, along with many other things. Once we finally completely made sure that the aircraft is safe, we go ahead and prep it for delivery back to home station. One additional fun fact that I want to leave you with today is that we're actually doing the first ever center display unit upgrade on a D-model aircraft. With two cockpits and a much more complex infrastructure, this is a challenge. However, we're working with our program office partners to overcome those and pave the way forward for future D-model installations of the center display unit. The CDU it consists of two computers, basically. One is what's called the primary flight display. The other is known as the situational display. The primary flight display replaced some of the older uh, barometric altitude sensors and different things that were in the F-16. Or The situational display provides uh, tactical information to the pilot in the air, uh, different things like that. So my role is what's known as a product owner in the Agile Scrum framework. and Basically, I represent the customer, which is the F-16 pilot. I get to work with them to gather requirements, uh, design capabilities, different features, and then I bring those, those requirements and I turn them into what's known as user stories in the Agile Scrum framework. So they have these really cool things called sprints. Ours are two weeks long, where you're working on a specific project and getting that accomplished. Uh, the goal is that every two weeks or so, we are able to create a product that the pilots can immediately test. So, um, for an example, the pilots sent us a request to add screen captures to the CDU. Probably in about two weeks, we figured out how to do that, we added the code, and we sent it down to Tucson to test that. It was really cool because they could give us feedback within two weeks of the request, which I think is really fast and powerful. And we didn't do it perfectly the first time. I think they wanted a five second delay before it would take a screen capture, so you had to hold some buttons down that whole time and they just wanted it to be faster. And so uh, we were able to work with them and probably about a month and a half later, they had completely finished the project. It was really powerful. Another cool thing is DevSecOps. So we had unit tests that we used to make sure that our code was working, but we wouldn't always remember to actually run them. And so sometimes weeks would go by between um, someone adding code that had created a problem and us noticing that the problem had been created, especially if it was off in some far off location. Now we have a pipeline that takes care of that for us. Every time I try to check in code, it runs all the unit tests and makes sure they're all passing. If it doesn't pass, I immediately know and I can go look at unit tests that are failing and figure out what I did that didn't quite work right. Another thing that our pipeline does is that it makes sure that our builds are consistent. Uh, before, we'd run our builds on different computers and this computer, uh, if you made a build for the pilots and sent it down, would work fine. And this computer, same build, same process, wouldn't work because the computers were configured differently. Now, um, we use the pipeline and it has the same computer system, same operating system, and, it, and a, a robot is building our build, which means that it doesn't forget steps. If you wrote the step, it will remember it. 
and that's really powerful. The CDO provides airspeed, altitude, attitude information, as well as tactical display and situational awareness displays. CDO also has a unique data transfer capabilities, which allows you to transfer documents and imagery, as well as sending the information over ARC-210 radios. Here at Depot, we bundled the CDO modifications with other avionics modifications to increase the capability of the warfighter. CDU provides a great capability for the F-16, switching over from analog gauges that were designed in the 70s and 80s, early 80s, uh, to get them up with more current uh, technology, provides an additional safety factor, uh, gives us a lot of uh, redundancy between the heads-up display and the CDU, things like flight path marker, velocity vectors, things like that, that uh, just give us additional capability, provide a margin of safety, better for instrument flying. But probably even more important than that for the CDU is uh, its ability to, to enhance the warfighting capability of the F-16. Able to put situational displays up, or uh, even more important than that, targeting pod displays that uh, you're able to now see higher resolution imagery uh, than you could see before on a bigger display. Uh, gives you more opportunity to make sure bombs are going on target and uh, also able to pass imagery back to the, to the guys on the ground. So cool capability that provides just additional warfighter capability. The CDU is an awesome upgrade for the F-16. Thank you for joining us here today at the Ogden Air Logistics Complex and taking the time to learn some more about our operations here so that we can better serve you as your warfighter's depot of choice.